Okay, welcome back, almost for the final time. Um, so in the last video, we were looking at some really telling and really, really interesting EEG experiments with DMT, uh, which showed that, which seemed to reflect the phases of the DMT trip, where the brain goes from, in the, in the initial phase, uh, the DMT trip, the chaotic phase, is followed by this ordered phase during, in the breakthrough. Uh, phase and this scene, this was reflected by this uh, initial drop in theta power, followed by this increase um, as the intensity of the the DMT experience progressed. In other words, as the the subject uh, went through to the uh, the breakthrough phase. Now I want to look finally at one um, last um, study, which is really brand new and is it's not even kind of properly kind of finally published yet, uh, but again is, is quite interesting, I think. And again, it's from the Imperial College London team. Uh, and this is actually looking at the, the movement of these brain oscillators, of these waves, the brain waves uh, uh, through the brain. So I told you that you know these brave wa brain waves can travel. They can travel up and down of the cortical hierarchy and indeed around the brain. Um, and that this seems to be important in uh, this processing, the movement of information up and down the cortical hierarchy. And so uh, the, the, the team at Imperial actually analyzed the, the EEG data and actually looked at the dynamics, looked at the way these, these, type, these waves moved uh, through the brain. So in the prior study, it was more about the, the changes in the, in the power of the of these particular uh, oscillatory frequencies, these frequency bands, um, but uh, in this study they actually looked at the dynamics. So let's just have a look at this uh, this study. So this study uh, again, this is probably not the final title. D DMT alters cortical traveling waves, and again, you know, it was from Robin Carhart Harris's team <coughs> yeah, uh, at Imperial. Um, so let's have a look at um, what they what they found. So. This, um, this figure, this diagram, this graph, should I say, um, shows you waves, uh, the power of waves that are traveling in different directions. So we've got forward traveling waves on the left. So these are traveling, um, these are bottom up waves. Now you know what I mean by bottom up now, waves that are traveling up the cortical hierarchy. So this, of course, is the error signals, right? This is the information coming from the environment up through the cortical hierarchy to the higher end of the model. Uh, and then we've got top-down waves, which they call backward waves. Uh, and these are the basically the predictions of the model, uh, which are traveling down the cortical hierarchy, predicting the sensory data. Uh, so we can label that predictions. There we go. Uh, now we're just going to focus uh, here. We won't go a full analysis of this. Uh, we'll just focus on the alpha uh, because we're kind of familiar with that now, particularly. Uh, and also the alpha waves are important uh, in uh, sensory processing. So what you see, first of all, in this diagram is not particularly surprising uh, in that we see, so the placebo with the, the dotted lines, this is when the subject is not given the drug. Um, so you see in here and here. So in both the cases, um, you see a reduction. So both forward and backward traveling alpha waves are reduced in the DMT state. And that's not particularly uh, surprising. We know that that happens. We know that you get an increase in disorder uh, and thus you get a, a very dramatic decrease in alpha power um, in the alpha waves. And that applies in both forward and backward uh, directions. However, what is interesting is when you actually look at the change uh, in the power of the forward and backward traveling waves over time, uh, which is shown in the next slide. So on the left, we've got uh, forward traveling waves uh, over time. So we've got time here. Uh, well, it's, it's actually written just as pre and post, but obviously that's you know before the drug was given and um, after the drug was given, pre and post. Uh, and on the right, we've also got pre and post for backward traveling waves. So the forward traveling waves are 
Um, these are the, um, the bottom up. And these are the top down predictive waves, bottom up being the, these are the error signals and these are the top down predictions. Um, now what you notice is that in the, in the placebo, the dotted line, is that there's actually no significant, it seems to be going down a bit, there's no significant actually change, statistically significant change in the power of forward traveling waves uh, in the placebo case. Whereas in the DMT case, uh, before they get the drug and after they get the drug, there's a very significant increase in uh, forward traveling waves, but bottom up waves. Uh, whereas there's the, there's the opposite case in the top down, the backward traveling waves on the right here. So again, with the placebo, without the drug, there's no change statistically, but you get a decrease in top down traveling waves. So what does this mean? Well, we know that these, these bottom up traveling waves are basically carrying these sensory information really uh, up the cortical hierarchy, whereas the top down waves are uh, carrying the, you know, the prediction. So what this really is suggesting um, is that the brain is acting like it's receiving um, information, uh, or should I say, that's a very, <laughs> um, that's a very <laughs> leading way to put it. Uh, it. The brain is kind of seems to be acting in a similar way as it does when it's actually processing visual information. Um, now you might say that's not that surprising because clearly DMT is a very, very visual experience, uh, but it is quite telling um, that the, the brain does seem to be acting in, in a similar kind of way. It seems to be in a kind of absorption kind of state, absorb. Uh, sensory absorption kind of state, receiving this kind of novel information up through the cortical hierarchy, just as the brain would if it was receiving novel sensory information that it was unable to predict, yeah? Um, which, which kind of hints at perhaps the idea that the brain is attempting to process uh, information that is, that is completely novel to it. And that's perhaps not surprising because the DMT state is you know, an extremely novel kind of uh, state to be in. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean, we have to be very careful here, <laughs> um, that, that the brain is really receiving information from some other dimension of reality. I'm not saying that, um, but, what we, but it does show that the brain is in the kind of state as, as if it was receiving information, novel information, new sensory information that it was unable to predict. And I think that is really, really fascinating. Now, what these, what they actually did in this study uh, was to actually compare um, the, the kind of test this idea, right? Let, let's actually give someone, give one of the subjects visual stimulation, someone who is not on the, DM, uh, on the drug, actually give them stimulation, visual stimulation through their eyes and look at the change in uh, the power of these brain, these backward and forward traveling uh, waves over time. Um, particularly the forward traveling waves, and, um, and let's compare that with the DMT state where, where they don't receive visual stimulation. And if the kind of, if the interpretation of the previous result was as, as, we, as, as they thought, that the brain seems to be acting as if it's receiving sensory information, then they, they perhaps could, should be quite similar. And indeed, that's what they saw. So let's have a look at that. So here we, we've got, um, um, two, um, two experiments basically. So on the right, this was when a subject was given uh, visual stimulation uh, during a particular time window, which is grey here, so on. So you can see um, the, the backwards traveling waves are in red. So let me actually label those. So these are backwards or top-down waves, yeah? Uh, and then you've got the forward traveling waves uh, in blue. And as you would expect, when the visual stimulation is switched on, you get an increase in information flowing upwards through the visual um, cortical hierarchy um, during the visual stimulation, and then it drops down again uh, after the visual stimulation ends. And with DMT, um, the same kind of thing happens. They're given the injection 
here, uh, and you see an increase in the um, forward traveling waves, just like you do with visual stimulation, then it drops down as the experience ends. And there is a decrease in backwards traveling waves, followed by a recovery. And you, indeed, you see exactly the same thing with visual stimulation. Um, the brain, uh, the power of these backward traveling waves drops down during visual stimulation when the brain is basically entering a uh, processing, you know, receiving new visual stimulation kind of phase uh, as opposed to kind of a predictive phase. Woo. Um, now these, the I should say actually that the authors did discuss this, and they said eyes closed DMT uh, is associated with striking changes in cortical dynamics, which are remarkably similar to those observed during actual eyes open visual stimulation. Specifically, we observed a reduction in backwards, so that's top-down traveling waves, and an increase in forward ones, so the, uh, the sensory processing bottom-up uh, traveling waves, as well as an overall decrease in alpha band oscillatory frequencies, as we've seen before. Oh, so, you know, this is, you know, this is a really exciting time for, for DMT psychedelic science. Yeah, you know, the, the team at Imperial are doing a stellar job, uh, really, in, in the early phases of, 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 of really looking at uh, and analyzing the effects of DMT on brain activity and on brain dynamics. And, and already, even with this, uh, this, this EEG study, you're already seeing quite remarkable things um, that you simply don't see with the other psychedelics um, and, and that seem to bear out um, what perhaps you would expect to see based upon um, the effects of the psychedelic, uh, uh, the effects of the specific psychedelic effects of DMT and that it does seem to, to take you to this alternate reality where your brain is constructing an entirely new uh, model of reality. Um, however, Beyond that, um, we have to be a little bit careful. Um, we can't draw too many conclusions from this, this early work. Uh, and certainly, you know, the, the conclusions that I might draw would be, might be different from the conclusions that other people would draw. But anyway, I think we have to leave that there. So, so that's the end, really, of the, um, the DMT unit and the end of the psychedelic neuroscience course. I will do another one final video where I'll kind of sum up where we've, you know, where we've come in these last um, eight units, and then that will be that. So I won't say any more. Um, I will see you, please, uh, for one final video.